Hello world, this is Jason Hibbets with opensource.com filling in for Jen White, and I'm happy to bring you the top five articles this week, September 15th through the 19th. As always, you can find all of the articles I talk about today in the notes below and posted every Sunday on opensource.com. We're wrapping up our back to school series highlighting how open source is used in education, and you'll see a few of those stories featured today. So let's jump right into this week's top five. Coming in at number five, Lobbying for open source in Linux and schools. Emil Brock started lobbying to bring more Linux and open source software to high schools and higher IT vocational institutions in the Netherlands and Belgium over eight years ago. He thinks that this can be categorized into three topics. First, the infrastructure of schools. Second, the desktop students and teachers work with. And third, the curriculum for IT education. His article goes in depth into each topic and he concludes that IT teachers need proper training and accompanying certification in order to advance this open source movement within education. Number four, three million users and hiring at edX. Our very own Jen Wyke interviews Ned Batchelder from Open edX team. Ned tells us that edX platform is, quote, the best place to experiment with new ideas and then share those ideas with other educators who can build on them and make their own improvements, end quote. Well, we put Ned on the hot seat and asked him more about his team at edX, about pull requests for the project, and how educators can learn more about open online education. And number three, Teaching Open Source Changed My Life. It's a fascinating article from Steve Burge, focusing on his career change from teaching to training. Steve talks about the importance of open source in education and says, quote, in 2006, I changed careers. I stopped being a regular teacher and stopped teaching to the test. I started teaching open source. Teaching open source has been a breath of fresh air for myself and for many of my students because with Open Source Way, there are no official tests. There is no official certification for the majority of open source projects, and there are no prescribed textbooks." End quote. Our number two post this week is Five Great Apps Backed with Open Data by Gene Holm, an evangelist for data.gov. I got to meet Jean at OzCon earlier this year where she gave a great presentation on data.gov. Well, in this post, Jean outlines five applications built from open data sets available from data.gov. To give you a flavor of those apps, Jean talks about Archimedes. It's an app that makes quantitative models for doctors and patients so that they can find effective interventions. Then there's Trulia, an app that provides insights into neighborhoods where you might be interested in moving. Go ahead. Type your address in and check out the results. I already did. Then there's apps like Hello Wallet, Safer Car, and Red Cross Hurricane. So I highly recommend checking out some of these apps, powered of course by Open Data and brought to you by um, inspired by data.gov. Our number one post this week is Open Source All the Tasks. First of all, I love the title. As many of uh, the readers know here, I wrote a book last year called The Foundation for an Open Source City, and my campaign to promote the book was called Open Source All the Cities, and this is one of the stickers I created for that campaign. Well, Fernando Piment from Brazil walks us through his mission to create a 100% open source workflow. After being invited to talk at the Firebird Developers Day about Firebird, which is a mature open source database management system, Fernando wanted to make a presentation using only open source tools and software. The mission started with the creation of the distribution and takes us through documentation, slides, and finally to the recordings of the event. Fernando, sh Fernando shares that, quote, the use of open source software in daily work has seen a huge evolution over the years, thanks to the entrepreneurship and cooperation of professionals from different fields of knowledge, end quote. He also used OpenShot as a video editor for post-production editing. So thanks, Fernando, for sharing on how you open sourced all your tasks. Well, that wraps up the top five of this week. You can find all of the links for the articles in the notes below. And before I sign off, you'll see I have a congrats, Jen, uh, on the whiteboard here. I'd like to give a special shout out to Jen and George. Jen Wyke, our content guru here at opensource.com, who's been bringing you our weekly top five for the last few weeks, is getting married this weekend. So congratulations, and if you're taking any marriage advice, I would encourage you to always have open communications. And remember that your commitment is a partnership. We're so happy for both of you. Well, that's all this week from opensource.com. I'm off to San Francisco, California next week for the annual Code for America Summit. It's one of my favorite conferences every year, and I'm really looking forward to it. 
Uh, if you're interested in an update while I'm at Code for America, post a few comments below and let me know what you'd like to learn more about. I may just do a video post from the Bay Area. We'll see you next week and thanks for tuning in.